To finish off with something that really goes to town with drawing, I'm gonna walk you through making a spirograph in SwiftUI. Now technically, spirograph is a trademark name, so it's not a spirograph, but it's a spirograph, um, but it's a toy where you place a pencil inside a circle and spin it around the circumference of another circle. And in doing so, it creates various interesting geometric patterns known as roulettes, like the casino game. This code contains some very specific mathematics and equation. I'm gonna explain it, but it's totally okay to say, nope, I'll skip this video, I'm not interested, or just watch me type. You do not have to copy it along if you don't want to. It's just for fun. There's no new Swift or Swift UI covered here. It's just to explore and noodle around. Okay. Our algorithm for drawing a spirograph has four total inputs. One is the radius of the inner circle, the smaller one we're drawing around. One is the radius of the outer circle, the one we're drawing outside. One is the distance of the virtual pen from a center of the outer circle. And then what amount of the roulette, the spirograph picture, to draw. That last part is optional, but I think it really helps you sort of see what's happening as our algorithm's working, because you can undo the drawing and redo it very easily. So we'll start off with those four parts for now. We'll say there's a strut called spirograph, which is a shape. It has an inner radius, int, and an outer radius, int, and a distance, int, and the amount to draw, a double. We're not gonna do path in just yet, but it's fine. We then want to prepare three values from this data, starting with the greatest common divisor, known as GCD in mathematics, of the inner and outer radius. Now, if you wanna calculate the GCD of two numbers, it's usually done with a Euclid's algorithm, and this is in uh, slightly simplified forms looks like this. Funk GCD of A int and B int returns a new int. We'll get a copy of A and a copy of B. And while B is not equal to zero, we will get a copy called temp and then use modulus with B and A. We'll say, B is A modulo B, and then A is temp. Copy it across. And when we're done, we'll return A, like that. The other two values are the difference between the inner radius and the outer radius, and how many steps it takes to draw the roulette. This is total number of degrees in a circle, so 360, multiplied by the outer radius, divided by the greatest common divisor, the GCD. Then multiplied by our amount, so we can control how much the spirograph to draw. All these inputs work best when provided as integers. When it comes to drawing the roulette, we've got to use double. So we're gonna create double copies of our inputs. So we'll now add our path in method here. First up, our divisor, the GCD, will be the GCD of our inner radius and our outer radius. So we've used that method already. Next, we'll get double copies of our outer radius, our inner radius, and our distance. So we'll do let outer radius be a double of self.outer radius, and let inner radius be a double of self.inner radius. And then let distance the double of self dot distance. I made a typo there, look at that, distance. And just, let's fix distance and spell it correctly. There we go. If you're gonna do it, we'll do it right. That's the double copies. We can now calculate the difference between our inner radius and our outer radius. We'll say, let difference be inner radius minus outer radius, using our double copies. And now the end point we want to draw how much of the roulette, the, the spinning spirograph that we want to draw, is going to be, let endpoint be, the ceiling of two times double dot pi times outer radius divided by the double of our divisor, divisor, and multiply the whole thing by 
the amount we want to draw. And there's more code to come here. Finally, we can draw the roulette itself by looping from zero to our end point. This thing we just calculated right here. Placing points at precise X and Y coordinates. Now, calculating the X and Y coordinates for a given point in that loop, known as theta or theta, is where the real mathematics comes in. This is the easy bit. But honestly, you've got to know, please, I have not memorized this. I have literally just converted the equation, which is a standard equation from Wikipedia into Swift. This is not something I would ever dream of memorizing. I'm just going to Wikipedia and Swifterize their code. So in here, x will be equal to the radius difference multiplied by the cosine of theta, added to the distance multiplied by the cosine of the radius difference divided by the outer radius multiplied by theta. Whew, that's x. Y is more or less the same with sine instead of cosine. That's the core algorithm. But we're going to make two small changes. We're going to add to x and y half the width and height of our drawing rectangle respectively so it's centered in our drawing space. And if theta is zero, i.e. this is the first point in our roulette being drawn, we'll call move to rather than add line to for the path. Okay, we can now go ahead and put in the final part of path and rect. First up, we will make a new path here. And now, brace yourself. <laughs> Again, you don't have to know this. You don't have to know this. It's just for fun. I have memorized it. I've copied Wikipedia. Well, Swifterized it. For theta in stride from zero through endpoint by 0.01. Our x is the difference times the cosine of theta plus the distance times the cosine of difference divided by outer radius times theta. Then our y, let's scroll down a little bit, our y is the difference times the sine of theta minus the distance times the sine of difference divided by outer radius times theta. It just is. Again, I would never have written that from scratch. I had to uh, look at Wikipedia. That should be in, not equals, my mistake. I thought x and y were to put each dot. Like I said, we're going to offset this by half the width and height, so it's centered inside our drawing area. So x plus equals rec dot width divided by 2, uh, and then y plus equals rec dot height divided by 2. And now, if it's the first place being drawn, if theta is 0, then we'll call move to point, as opposed to add line to point. So path dot move to cg point, x is x, y is y else path dot add line to cg point x is x y is y and finally return return path okay it compiles it's a good sign <laughs> i realized that was a lot of heavy mathematics but the payoff is about to come we can now use that shape inside our content view down here, adding various sliders to control the inner radius, the outer radius, the distance, the amount, and even color if you want to. So we'll stay. There is an at state private var, private var, inner radius of 125.0, sensible default based on trial and error. At state private var, outer radius of 75.0. Again, trial and error. Uh, at state private var distance is 25.0 at state private var private var amount is 1.0 and at state private var hue is 0 0.6 now let's make a v stack with uh, spacing zero so we can really cram things in we'll add a space at the top before our spire graph is drawn We'll then place our spirograph with all those values coming in. Now remember, we've got to convert them because you can see the doubles have these things. We've got to convert them to be real values they can handle, i.e. integers. 
So our inner radius is an int of inner radius. Outer radius is an int of outer radius. Distance is an int of distance. Distance. And amount is just amount. When we have that thing, we will stroke it with a color using the hue of our hue. Saturation will be one, brightness one, and a line width of one. In a fixed frame with a width 300, height 300. We'll then add a spacer after our spire graph to push it upwards a little bit. And then we're gonna add a group. There's a bunch of views in here, otherwise we'll hit a 10 view limit. So we'll say the text is inner radius with the int of inner radius next to it in string interpolation. Then there is a slider binding its value to dollar inner radius in the range 10 through 150, stepping by one each time. And I'll add a little bit of padding here. We'll do horizontal and bottom. That's our first one. Next we'll have the text for outer radius. String interpolation, int of outer radius, end end. Then a slider with a value of dollar outer radius in the range 10 through 150, step one, same padding, here we go. Below that will be our distance. I'm not copying paste this, so I might be here all day. Um, text of distance, then interpolation int distance. Slider will be dollar distance, dollar distance. In the range this time we'll do one through 150, step one, same padding. The amount's slightly different because it's a double. We don't wanna have, you know, 0 0.936421, it's pretty ugly. So we'll say the text of amount, string interpolation amount, but with a format of dot number dot precision, precision, and then fraction length of two. And right number of uh, interpolations like that. Then a slider value of dollar amount, same padding again. Oops, that's not even the right padding, that's the wrong thing. Right padding again, there we go, boom. So that's now inner, outer, distance, and amount. And the last one is going to be our hue, our color. So we'll say text of color, slider, value, hue, padding, dot, horizontal. And that completes our code. That's a lot of typing, a lot of typing. What are the odds I've got it right first time while trying to talk as I go? <laughs> We're gonna find out, I'll press command R and find out if it works. Oh, look at that. I can now drag these things around to produce different kinds of shapes as I'm drawing. And uh, if I say, for example, I want the inner radius to, to be smaller or bigger or the distance to be smaller or bigger, I can create a huge variety of these spirograph shapes by spinning in different kinds of ways. Uh, and there are all sorts of interesting varieties you can make. It's very, very interesting you can do. It's just a lot of fun to noodle around with, quite frankly. Let's go real big and then go this one even bigger. Look at that, beautiful. Um, the amount thing will undraw the spire graph. So you can see what it's actually doing. It's looping around again, 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 drawing many, many more of these shapes again, again, again to produce this beautiful thing. And finally, of course, our color hue here will draw in various colors. Whew, it worked. <laughs> I'm slightly surprised it worked first time. I hope you can try it out, either by following along here or copying the code from the website. Just run it and appreciate how beautiful these roulettes are, these spire graphs. What we're actually seeing is only actually one form of these roulettes. Um, this is called a hypertrochoid. With small adjustments to our algorithm, if you're feeling brave, you can generate epitrochoids and more, which are beautiful in different kinds of ways. Before I finish, I want to remind you that all these parametric equations we're using here are just mathematical standards I did not invent. I just went to Wikipedia's page on hypertrochoids and converted their code and their equations into Swift. 